Good morning, Lagos Housewife here again with Monday Bible Story. For today's story, please, if you are a parent that your children listen to Bible stories from me with, with you, uh, listen to this alone first before deciding if your children are old enough to hear this story. It's from the Bible, but yeah, some of those parts of the Bible. So just listen to it first before deciding if it's okay for your children to hear it. So today I'll be talking about Judah. Judah the man, not the tribe, the fourth son of Jacob and Leah. So Judah grew up, got married and had three children, Er, Onan and Shela. And so when the firstborn grew up and was to be married, Judah married a woman named Tamar for him. And so Tamar and Er, they were married and then Er died without a child. And as at that time, the law was, if a man dies without a child, especially a firstborn son, that his home should not be left empty. So what will happen is one of his brothers will marry the wife. Well, not really, well, marry shall will marry the wife. And then the first child he has from her will belong to the brother that died. And that one will now carry the legacy, the home, the family of the elder brother. So meaning when Er died, Tamar was to marry Onan. And the first child she will have for Onan will belong to Er, her late husband. You understand? So that was what Judah did. Judah now gave her to Onan. Now Onan have a son with Tamar for your brother. Now, Onan didn't want that. He wanted his child to be his child. He didn't want to have a a son that will now go to his brother and not be his own son. So what he did was, when he laid with Tamar, he deliberately made sure he did not ejaculate inside her. He poured his seed outside. And the Bible records that the Lord was very displeased about this and he struck Onan and Onan too ended up dying without having any child. And so meaning Tamar was now to be married to Shela who will now have children for his brothers. Judah was not ready to lose his last son. He was like maybe this woman is bad luck. He married the first one died. Second one died. This third one. Mm-ba. So he told Tamar, go to your father's house for a while. When Shela has grown enough to marry, then you will marry him. So Tamar went back. But of course, that was not Judah's plan. He had no intention of Shela marrying Tamar. So once Tamar had gone to him, that was bye-bye. That's the end of your bad luck in our family. So the years went by, Tamar was just dressing as a widow in her father's house. She could not uh, be married off to another person because she was still to give a child to her late husband. She could not be married off now. She was just there alone and life was going on like that. And so the years went by, Shela grew, Judah made no attempt to marry Shela to Tamar, nothing like that. Then after a while, Judah's own wife passed on. So uh, Judah's friend came to comfort him and everything. And then they now traveled to the city where Tamar was. You know, the friend took him as in left to just cheer him up after the loss of his wife. And Tamar heard that her father-in-law was in the city. So she went, she removed, secretly removed her widow's widow's uh, dressing and then she dressed like a prostitute but covered her face with a veil and she went to sit by the well where she knew uh, Judah will pass and Judah passed and he saw her and he was like okay he wants to take her for the night and everything and he requested what is your chair what are your charges and she said a, a, a kid a goat and he said that he will give that to her but she was not like hey you don't have it with you now give me something as a pledge said what do you want as pledge she requested his signet ring 
his cord, that's his shepherd's rope, and his staff, his shepherd's staff. And Judah gave them to her, and then they went, they laid together. And she was like, when you send the goats, I will return your things to you. So they parted. And the following day, he got a goat and was like, send someone to the, he said, the, the uh, prostitute by the well, go and give it to her. The person said, there's no prostitute by the well. He said, no, she's dead. He went, they didn't see anybody. He didn't say, and he searched up and down for her. He didn't find her. And he was like, okay, yeah, I shall have tried. I did. It's not as if I didn't want to fulfill my pledge. It's that we didn't see her. And he went back home. And then... Three months later, the news got to him. They said Tama was pregnant and he was so offended. He said, how can she be pregnant? She has disgraced the name of my son. She has done that. And whatever happens to her lot, must, uh, the punishment due to her lot is what must be due to her. That she should be taken, uh, brought out and burned. And so they were going to do that to Tama. And then Tama said, the owner of my pregnancy is the man that owns these things and she brought out the signet ring the cord and the staff and immediately judah was like ah so it is and he said it is not her fault he was the one that behaved dishonorably with her by not fulfilling his part of the pledge so tamar ended up giving birth to twins perez and zera for her father-in-law and you know here's the twist one of those twins perez the first twin ended up being one of the ancestors of jesus you see jesus lineage eh? man it was wild a lot of holy shirishi in it but you know when i think about it is just it just tells me how much god's arms are wide open to us that he can put all this flawed all these kind of people in the family he chose his son to come through and that tells me what sin do you think you 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 have committed that can keep you away from god he's telling you come come just come he will fix you you know he he says come it's not it's not as if when you come you continue in the sin no he has a way of changing lives just as the way he cleansed that lineage by the introduction of Jesus. You know, Jesus, the perfection of God. And he came from such a lineage. Those were not, Rahab too was in that lineage. So many Orishirishi, in fact, one of the most wicked kings, Manasseh in the Bible, was also part of that lineage. So, please come to Jesus. He, he deliberately chose that family to come to, to tell you that no matter what you've done, no matter what you are, there is a place for you in my family. And I'll see you again next week.